my kids and I were watching last night. They were so excited, and it's it's almost as if NASA is inspiring a new generation after all these years. What makes this particular launch so significant? It's an exciting time for the country, Emily, because we're now going operational with these commercial crew transport services to the space station. So after the shuttle retired in 2011, we had no way to get to the space station, which we largely built, except for renting rockets from the Russians. And so now we're out from under the Russian monopoly with this operational launch of uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon. And next year, Boeing will join that fleet with their Starliner spacecraft. So NASA will have two reliable ways uh, really state-of-the-art ways to get to the space station for the next 10 years of its research life. Now, what exactly are these astronauts going to be doing in space? We always hear the sort of vague, they're going to be helping out with scientific experiments. But give us some more details. What are they doing up there? Right. So this crew of four, uh, the astronauts who just launched last night, that's uh, you know Ike Glover and Mike Hopkins and Shannon Walker and Suichi Noguchi, they join the crew of three that's already up there, two Sergeys from Russia, and uh, Kate Rubens, who's a, a scientist in her own right. And so that crew now has one extra person over the usual number of six to turn to science research on board the space station. More productivity, more person hours applied to science research in the three big labs up on the space station. So everything from growing plants on the station to help us uh, you know, forge a way to Mars by recycling uh, carbon dioxide and making food in space to astrophysics experiments with the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Latest experiment that I've really been intrigued by is using microbes to attack and uh, process rocks from the moon or asteroids to make valuable uh, economic materials. Uh, you know, side byproducts of the bacteria metabolism can produce economically valuable minerals and compounds that we might either even use back on Earth, more likely use them in space, you know, for the life support system or to construct building materials, for example, out of these micro-processed rocks from space. So, as you mentioned, uh, the names of the astronauts, including Shannon Walker, a female Af astronaut, an African-American astronaut, you know, this is definitely a, a history-making mission, and I saw a lot of um, parents tweeting about their, their little girls. Um, watching this last night. Talk to us about how this partnership with SpaceX and how outside partnerships in general sort of change the equation for American efforts to get to the final frontier. I think it's a big important development that we've shifted over to involve and, and to enlist commercial partners in NASA's exploration program. You know, so it's not just a taxi ride to the space station, but by bringing to the table new rocket designs, a, a way to recycle the first stage of the Falcon 9 SpaceX booster by landing it back on a recovery barge, for example, you know, that's a new innovation. You know, NASA used to recycle my old shuttle boosters, but not in such a sophisticated way. And so this lowering the cost of launch services to orbit is not only going to help NASA, funded by the taxpayer, but it's also going to free up funds in the NASA budget to go out to the moon and the asteroids and Mars. And, you know, companies like SpaceX and Boeing are now going to be able to offer these same spacecraft to tourists who want to pay to go to orbit for a week, visit first the space station, but later on there are going to be commercial, uh, commercial hotels uh, and pharmaceutical and industrial labs in orbit that these transports will be able to service. So it's really bringing innovation into the NASA program and as, as well as lowering costs. How far out is that, you know, when a space tourist can go into space and stay at a hotel up there? <laughs> it's an exciting development. You know, the more people, and I see in the next 10 years, hundreds of people going into space outside the professional astronaut ranks, I see that as generating a larger, broader base of support for NASA's exploration efforts. There are always going to be professional explorers employed by NASA and its international partners. But, you know, if you can have a private experience in space, yeah, first the wealthy, but then competition is going to bring that cost down. And in a generation, I think it'll be uh, much like a trip to Antarctica is today, where you can take an adventure uh, sojourn for a couple of weeks in orbit. And that's really important um, to engage a broader base of the public in the personal experience of space exploration. I'm curious about the geopolitical forces at play here. Are we competing against China and Russia the same way we were in Cold War times when we landed on the moon, especially as we have a changeover in the U.S. administration? Hmm. I would say that we're not under the gun like we were during the Cold War days of the 1960s, where John F. Kennedy had 
committed the U.S. to trying to get a human on the moon first. Uh, the Soviets were certainly in that race in a very serious way. And we had tragic failures like a fire on the launch pad that killed three astronauts. That's how serious that competition was. The schedule was really pushing the United States to, to take on the maximum amount of risk. Now, today we have geopolitical competition with uh, the Chinese who are most capable. Uh, the Russians are still involved, perhaps in a partnership with the Chinese in the next 10 years. Um, but it's not a schedule-driven race uh, like we think of, of in the 1960s space race. Instead, it's important to invest for the long term so that the U.S. has a technological advantage that it maintains over competitors like China. So the Chinese, for example, in 10 years, they want to have their people on the moon. Now, we did that over 50 years ago, but we can't allow the situation to develop where the Chinese are the only ones who can reach the moon's surface. You're no longer the technological leader of this planet if you can't work with your people on another planet. Now, you have gone to space four times yourself. You've done multiple spacewalks. You helped install a critical part of the International Space Station, spent 53 days living and, and working in space. And I know that you personally have spent done a lot of research on asteroids. Um, there's talk of mining um, you know, the objects, the, 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 the debris in, in outer space. Talk to us about how feasible a project like that is and what the actual use of it would be. So here's another example of commercial innovation in outer space exploration. You know, we're, we're bringing these commercial companies to space with these low cost transports and reliable transports like the Crew Dragon and the Starliner. And that is going to also enable cheaper robotic missions to the moon's poles where we know that there is water ice available. Also on the nearby asteroids where there is water locked up in the minerals on the surface of some of these objects. And so water is like gold in space. You can make it into oxygen to breathe. You can drink the water, of course, and you can split that water into oxygen and hydrogen, which makes cheap rocket fuel available in space where it's needed, not having to be hauled up expensively from Earth. So I think the mining revolution is first going to start with water perhaps uh, purchased by the government as a supply of a reliable supply of rocket fuel. But then products from that mining operation will begin to trickle into the larger economy, using it for construction materials, uh, for feeding a greenhouse, for example, for providing organic chemicals to be used for industrial processes in space. So it's great to start with government customers mining or buying water that's mined on the moon and the asteroids, but then soon that's going to lead to a commercial okay. market for all these raw materials.